Hello, I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. The topic today is about fat-soluble vitamins. We've talked in the past about the water-soluble vitamins, the B vitamin category and C vitamin category. Today we're talking about the fat-soluble vitamins. These are vitamins that dissolve in oil. They break down in oil and dissolve and disperse and spread out, and they last longer in the body and take longer to go away. Therefore, they have a tendency for higher toxicity. So they are the vitamins A, D, E, and K, and in some ways you would consider them the vital nutrients, the omega-3 fats. Now, there are omega-3 fats and omega-6 fats that are incredibly important. They are vital nutrients. So you, you can't negotiate with them. You must have them. They're not like other herbs, which are not essential. While I love dill, dill is an example of an herb that you could live without your entire life, but you cannot live without vitamin A. At some point, you'll get sick and eventually die from a deficiency of these vitamins if you don't get them. Uh, luckily, they're fairly easy to get, although um, you know, we, don't, we don't get them optimal at all times and in all forms. So let's start with vitamin A. Vitamin A is, um, is retinol, or retinol, retinol is a vitamin that sometimes is known as beta carotene in its vegetable form and, and water soluble form. The body converts it into, into the active form of vitamin A. It's also converted into vitamin A through cooking. So if you cook carrots, you'll get a lot more active vitamin A. Some vitamins are dispersed or destroyed by cooking, like vitamin C, for example. Vitamin C and B vitamins are damaged by heat and light, and vitamin A gets actually more concentrated using cooking techniques. There's a family of vitamin A um, cousins, I guess. I like to call them chemical cousins. Just as I said before that vitamin C has the chemical cousins, the bioflavonoids or isoflavones, which is about 10,000 compounds that occur in nature that are very similar molecularly and, and use some of the same pathways and support some of the same biochemical pathways as vitamin C. Likewise, with vitamin A, there are these, um, these carotenoids, and there are, again, you know, 8,000 known carotenoids, at least, that are out there, and they, are, they occur in nature, they occur in colored vegetables, they occur in, in colored vegetables and some colored fruits, but mostly colored vegetables. So when you see these, these beautiful yellows and oranges that are in these vegetables, those are the chemical cousins of vitamin A. So uh, much as Albert St. Georgie, the discoverer of vitamin C, said, you can't just take ascorbic acid, you need all the family of, of vitamin C. And you also can't just take vitamin A or retinol, you have to take all the other carotenoids to be truly healthy. Some of it comes in, in animal flesh, some of it comes in, in uh, vegetables that are colored. So this idea of using the antioxidants and anti-cancer agents, uh, carotenoids and bioflavonoids are extremely promising. There are drug companies working very hard right now to try to find analog drugs that work like carotenoids and flavonoids, and uh, yet we have them nearly free for our use. They're, they're incredibly inexpensive to find and manufacture, and uh, they're available over the counter as mixed carotenoids. So a um, person can buy mixed carotenoids as well as vitamin A. There is some danger of vitamin A. It's probably the most dangerous of all the vitamins for overdosing. 100,000 international units a day for six months will poison a person. Certainly there is a lesser dose that could poison people. Pregnant women have to be very careful about vitamin A. The typical holistic dose of vitamin A is around 10,000 international units, but um, that seems to be a lot for some people. And by that, I mean by regulators and, and people that think they're regulators. Um, vitamin A is used in the body to, to heal tissues. It's used to trigger DNA repair. Vitamin A works very well with zinc. Zinc and vitamin A work together to help your skin and make your immune system strong. Vitamin A is one of the most famous anti-cancer antioxidants. And so um, you'll see vitamin A be used in immune conditions for, for helping people with immunity. But again, there is a danger of taking too much of it. A person can take too much vitamin A and it, it can be toxic and damaging to the liver and, and other organs. Vitamin E has a, also, just like vitamin C and vitamin A, has a family. And these are the tocopherols and tocotrienols. And they have Greek letters in front of them, names like alpha, beta, delta, gamma, tocopherol, and, and um, all of these other different names, tocotrienols. These occur in nature. Some of them occur in grains before they're processed, and they are taken away by the processing of grain and, and the, the removing of the hull around um, grains and, and the denutrification of the processing of grains. I'm not a major fan of grains in my diet personally, but 
grains can be healthy and, and they can be certainly healthier than they are when they're processed. So vitamin E is, is one of the most famous vitamins because it's a vitamin without a deficiency syndrome. Nobody really knows what happens if you get vitamin E deficient. Now, we know that vitamin E is mysteriously responsible for heart function. We know that vitamin E is, is extremely important for reproductive function and fertility, although we can't quite pin it down to something that we can, we can add a dose for each person and say, you need this and you need this and you need this. I find clinically that for all of the vitamins, the patients really need a family approach of the mixed carotenoids, the mixed bioflavonoids, the mixed tocotrienols, the mixed tocopherols. There were a number of famous studies on smokers where they looked at smokers and cancer and they said patients that were given beta carotene, for example, one of the vitamin A analogs we talked about, would get cancer higher than people that were not given beta carotene. So in chemistry, we always say we want to support a biochemical pathway from several fronts. We want to support it from over here and over here and over here. Imagining that we're supporting a biochemical pathway with more than just one path, more than just one uh, reagent and product uh, using the law of mass action. We don't want to shove one reaction to, to function it with a high burden and stress all the other reactions. We, we really want to support all the different chemistries. So one of the ways you can do that is by giving a person, yourself hopefully and your family members, these vitamins with their brethren, with their mixed brethren. So with vitamin E, you might take D-alpha tocopherol is the, the classic form of vitamin E that is the natural vitamin E. Well, L-alpha tocopherol is the synthetic form. So mixed D-L-alpha tocopherol is the, the classic vitamin E. Just like ascorbic acid is vitamin C and retinol, retinol is, is vitamin A. So a person would do well by taking a, a variety of these, uh, you know, mixed alpha, beta, delta, and gamma tocotrienols and tocopherols and taking them in a supplement form if they're, if they're interested in, in experimenting with how their health works. I've done this and I have had massively increased wellness. In fact, I want to mention that a couple of elderly eye doctors, uh, not ophthalmologists, but optometrists in the past have told me that vitamin A and E was their secret weapon, but not just vitamin A and E, it was the chemical cousins, vitamin A with the car carotenoids, the mixed carotenoids, and vitamin E with the mixed tocopherols and the mixed tocotrienols. Tocopherols have been around forever, but tocotrienols are kind of newish to a lot of people. They've been around for decades, but they haven't been talked about much. So what these eye doctors have told me was, if you take A and E combinations with their families, with their chemical, chemical cousins, that you can help with a lot of eye conditions. One of them being the laxity and, and looseness or, or suppleness of the lens. The lens itself is supposed to compress and relax in your eye, and that helps you focus. So as we age, we get this presbyopia, which is old eyes, and that has to do with how rigid the proteins are in the lens. And so vitamin A and E can aid in the process of making sure that those proteins stay young and stay vibrant and stay flexible, and that the, the protein and fat mixture of the molecules and how, how those cells work, which we won't talk about today, that they can stay flexible for longer. And um, I, I know a lot of people who have experimented with this, and as they pass age 40 and 45 and 50, they begin to notice that they don't need glasses with presbyopia. Presbyopia is the person that takes a look at something and then has to push it far away because they can't see it up close. That, that's the rigidity of the, of the lens. These eye doctors that were talking to me were describing vitamin A and E as marvelously antioxidant that help keep these proteins and, and fats in your eyeball in good shape. It's mostly protein, but um, the, the molecules we're speaking of. But keeping those proteins in good shape is what keeps them from aging and keeps them well, aging better. And that, that allows us to get rid of floaters. And I've had many, many patients, including myself, get rid of floaters that I've had in the past. Uh, even in, in my college years, I had floaters and I got rid of them by just taking judicious vitamins. We're not talking about excessive amounts of vitamins, although I'm not against high doses of vitamins at some time. So this is very useful. Vitamin A, uh, the doses of vitamin A is going to be, you know, 10,000 international units for a lot of people per day. It could be less and then the dose for vitamin E is often just a few hundred international units. All of the fat-soluble vitamins are somewhat of a blood thinner. So we have to be careful when we take uh, vitamins. Patients of mine and, and myself have noticed bloody noses if you take too much A or too much E, especially. Vitamin D is a, another supplement that we see a lot. I'm, I'm switching to vitamin D now. Vitamin D is important for bones and brain especially. It has a lot to do with mood disorders and the vitamin D receptor, which is another topic for SNP discussion in the future. Vitamin D is extremely important for mood disorders, for depression, for anxiety, 
for people that sometimes feel a bit crazy uh, and they don't know why, they often have a vitamin D receptor SNP with the COMT gene SNP. And these are something we'll, we'll talk about in the future. The sense of immunity and the strength of our immune system is extremely related to vitamin D levels and it's easily checked. Unfortunately, a number of our, of our minorities in the United States have less vitamin D in especially the children. This is a big concern and we need to get out there and make sure that we test children and give them vitamin D supplements in the United States in the school system and get them access to low inexpensive vitamin D. And then there's vitamin K1 and K2. Vitamin K1 is a clotting vitamin and vitamin K2 is a little, a little less known and it has, it's not a, not a clotting vitamin, but it has more to do with bone health and brain health and a few other things, but it's, it's very important for bone health and brain health. So we give vitamin K2 to uh, women who are having trouble with bone density. We also give it to men who have difficulty with bone density. K2 helps with bone metabolism and brain metabolism, especially in aging. So that's vitamin A, D, E, and K, K1 and K2. It's all the different components, and, and I, I won't go into each of the components because there are, you know, between eight and 10,000 family members of the, of the carotenoid family and the isoflavonoid, bioflavonoid family from vitamin C. There's about, you know, eight, eight or 10 known members of the, the tocotrienol and tocopherol, which is the vitamin E family. There are certainly more vitamin issues to talk about, and there's certainly more in the tocotrienol and tocopherol family. But for now, that's a good brief summary of looking for supplements when you go online. That's our, our section.